Hello, my name is Alinda and welcome to another Paddocks video. Today I'll be talking to you about the practical preparation for general meetings in sectional title schemes that should be undertaken by the scheme's trustees and or their managing agents. On the 7th of October 2016, the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act 8 of 2011 introduced a number of significant amendments to the process of preparation and running of general meetings within a sectional title scheme. Prescribed Management Rule 17.6 sets out the order of business at general meetings, which should serve as a guideline in the preparation for these meetings. Let's look at this in the context of annual general meetings, although the process will be very similar in the case of special general meetings. Once the trustees have resolved upon a date for the AGM, a venue for the meeting will need to be determined and booked, unless the meeting will be held at the scheme. It is recommended that the venue be booked for the date of the meeting and a possible adjournment thereof, as the adjourned meeting must be held at the same place. When deciding on a venue, the trustee should ensure that remote attendance at the meeting will be possible, as required by Prescribed Management Rule 1710. For example, the venue should have teleconference facilities or an internet connection for Skype. Next, a notice and agenda must be prepared, depending on the nature of the general meeting and the business to be transacted at the meeting. Prescribed Management Rule 17.7 provides that the trustees determine the agenda for an annual general meeting or special general meeting and must ensure that the agenda contains a description of the general nature of all business to be tabled at the meeting and a description of the matters that will be voted on at the meeting, including the proposed wording of any special or unanimous resolution should such special business be dealt with at the meeting. The agenda, depending on the type of meeting, must include the items as prescribed by Prescribed Management Rule 17.6 A to N. The notice must be accompanied by this agenda as well as a copy or comprehensive summary of any document to be considered or approved by the members at the meeting and a proxy form in the prescribed format. An attendance register must be prepared and preferably be easy to use by both members and proxy holders. The attendance register should reflect the name of the registered owner, their section number and their door number if it is different to their section number and the name of their proxy holder if the proxy form was submitted prior to the meeting. The attendance register will be utilised to ensure that the quorum requirements of the meeting is met. As, vo as voting no longer takes place by a show of hands, a sufficient number of voting cards or ballots must be prepared for any item of business that will be voted on, including any item that could be taken to a vote, such as the election of the person to chair the meeting. My suggestion is that separate voting cards be prepared, such that voting tabulation can be done following each item voted on, ensuring that the results of each vote can be announced during the course of the meeting. I've noted from the meetings I've attended as from the 7th of October last year that the best method of such tabulation is electronically, mostly in the form of an Excel spreadsheet with the necessary formulas to assist in the calculation of votes taken according to participation quota. My further suggestion is that the voting cards be printed on different colour paper and placed in the order of the votes to be taken so as to ensure that there is no confusion as to which voting card must be completed and handed in following each vote. The voting card should include the name of the registered owner, the section number, the participation quota, the item to be voted on, and an indication of the vote taken. My recommendation is that the voting cards be handed out to the relevant owner or proxy holder when they sign the attendance register to ensure that it is provided to the correct and authorised person in attendance at the meeting. As mentioned earlier, the agenda must be accompanied by a copy or summary um, of a document to be considered or voted on, such as the minutes of the previous meeting, reports or the budget. Therefore, in preparation of the notice, these documents will need to be obtained and finalised. If the meeting is an AGM, any trustee nominations received prior to the meeting will need to be confirmed as correctly completed and tabled at the meeting, where the nominees for election should be introduced to the members and the representatives present and perhaps explain to the attendees the reason for their standing for election as a trustee. If the chairperson of the trustees will be chairing the meeting, they must be adequately prepared and be able to comply with Prescribed Management Rule 18, which sets out the duties of the chairperson, failing which an alternative person should be appointed as chairperson of the meeting to be confirmed by the members and representatives at the meeting. Thank you for watching this video. If you are a Paddocks Club member, why not discuss this matter further with us on the discussion forum.